Hello, you wonderful people. In today's video, we're going to continue our Strapi 5 crash course. If you're not sure, I already released the two previous videos. You can, of course, find them on YouTube, but you could also find the complimentary notes here on our website. Before we're gonna talk about what we're going to focus on today, you'll be able to see all the new released videos here under all courses, go to view course, and currently we have two where we build our first component and collection type to represent our top navigation that we might have on our website. You could always find all the notes here in the side area of the video, but all these videos are also available for free on YouTube. You don't need to have an account. If you wanna sign in to see the notes, you could just click sign up and click sign in, and you're gonna have guest user here that you could click on and see all the courses and see all the notes. So no big deal. This third lesson, we're going to take a look how we could build this component here. What we wanna do is figure out how do we structure this hero section data in our Strapi application. So let's jump right into it. You can also find all of the code here at the GitHub repo by navigating to Paul Baslavsky and looking up Strapi 5 LMS crash course but I would recommend going through the previous lessons to make sure that you get up to speed. Here, I already have my Strapi application running and in our previous lessons, if we go to Content Type Builder, we took a look how to build our first components. We created our link component and we also created our top navigation component, which stores our data for our top navigation. And for that, we created a single type page, which has all the items that we need for our top navigation using the components that we created. And we are able to store that data in Strapi based on the way we structure our data. So here you see that we have our home link, about link, and our blog link, and our call to action that represents our website's uh, top navigation data. And in this tutorial, we're focusing more on Strapi, so we're not covering how to build out the front end. You could find that more in the other courses that I'm working on. For instance, this Next.js course, as I continue with the Strapi course, I show you how to implement the Strapi data in your Next.js application, and I'm trying to do the same thing in the Astro. But here, we're mostly focusing on Strapi 5, and that's why you're here. Before building this out in Strapi, let's take a look on one way we could represent this. So our hero section is this orange box here. And what it encapsulates is that we have our data that we want to represent in our hero section. We have our subheading, our heading, our text, our links, and our image. So let's go ahead, build this out in Strapi first to see how we could represent this data. So inside my Strapi application, I'm gonna navigate to the content type builder and here we're going to create a new component and we are going to call it hero section and we are going to save it under blocks and now let's click continue looking at the component we could add our first fields so let's start with the subheading so we're going to select text we're going to keep it short text and we're going to call this sub uh, heading just like so. Now let's click add another field. Taking a look at our hero section, we're going to have our main heading. So let's go ahead, use the text field, and we're going to call this heading, and it's gonna be short text as well. Add another field. We're going to now represent this text. We're going to call it text. And so let's go ahead, use our text field, but we're gonna say long text and say text and click add another field. Now we're going to have a couple of different links and we already in our previous video created our link component. So we're going to go ahead and reuse it. So here we're going to click on components. We're going to say use existing component. Let's select our component and we're going to keep it repeatable because we want to easily be able to add multiple links. Let's select our component and we call it link. Here, I'm gonna call it links, and let's click add another field. And finally, we took care of all of these items, so we just have to add this image. In Strapi, we could do this by selecting the media field. We're gonna to go to advanced settings first, make sure that we only select images. 
as allow types back to basic settings. Instead of multiple media, we're going to set single and we're going to call this image and click finish. Now here you see the representation of our content for our hero section. We have our subheading, heading, text, our links, which is a repeatable component. That means we could have multiple and our image. And this exactly matches what we have here. We have our subheading, heading, our text, our links, and our image. So now that we are able to represent this data, let's go ahead and see how we could use it in Strapi inside a page. Now, because this is going to live in our landing page, which will have our hero section, including our headings and features, all the components that we're going to build in the future, let's create another single type page to represent our landing page. But before we do that, make sure you save your changes. Now that our changes are saved, let's navigate to single types and we're going to create a new single type. And we're going to create a new page called landing page and go ahead and click on continue. And here for now, we're just going to add a text field, which is going to be title for our main page, which we could use as a meta description. It's gonna be short text. Add another field, it's gonna be text. We're going to use long text, and this is gonna be our page description. Perfect, let's click finish and save. Now that we have our basic landing page, let's take a look how we're able to add components. Now, you can go ahead and add a component, use an existing component, and point to our hero section. But we wanna make this page dynamic where the editor gets to decide what blocks or components they wanna display. So instead of doing it this way, we're going to go ahead, click add another field, but instead of components, we're going to say dynamic zone. And we're going to call this blocks. Now let's add component to the zone. We're gonna say use existing component, and now we're able to select our hero section. Now let's go ahead, click finish and save. Now that we have our basic landing page layout, we have our title description and our blocks where for now we only have one, our hero section. So let's go ahead and create our first page. We're gonna go ahead to content manager. We're going to click on landing page, the page that we created, and I'm gonna say home page, welcome to Strappy 5 Crash Course. And we're going to here add our first component, which is going to be our hero section. So click on hero section, expand it, and let's add our items. I'm gonna add the same copy that I have here. So let's say, Subheading is gonna be welcome to coding after 30. For our heading, I'm gonna copy this heading and you could add whatever headings that you like just for simplicity. I'm gonna go ahead and copy what I have on this deployed website. Back here, we're gonna put it in text and now we're going to add our links. And for now, I'm just gonna add one link and this link is gonna say getting star started and it's going to take you to the coding after 30 website that's already deployed we're going to say that is external is true and type for now we're going to say link which is perfectly fine and now let's go ahead and add an image add new asset browse files and for now i'm just going to add this a random image from my computer which is perfectly fine upload asset click finish and once everything is set, you have all your data, go ahead, click publish. Nice. Now that we have our homepage completed, we could go ahead and take a look how we could get the data from this page using our API. Under settings, we're going to navigate to user's permission plugin. Under roles, we're going to say public. And this is something similar we did for our global settings page. We're going to do the same thing for our landing page where we're going to give our find permission. And here you could see the endpoint that we have to hit to get our data. Now I'm going to scroll to the top, make sure click save. And to get our data, I'm going to use Postman and we're going to make a get request to our endpoint. 
that you could see here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna paste it in. And now when I click send, you're gonna see that we are returning our data. We have our title, description, and some of the other basic information. But you may be wondering when we take a look and we look at our content manager on their landing page, we have our title description, but we're not getting any of our blocks. Well, in Strapi, you need to specifically say and specify the relations that you wanna populate. So let's go ahead and see how we could populate these items in our response. To help us do this, we're going to search for Strapi Query Page Builder. You could find it in our documentation. And here we have an example uh, query, but we're going to construct one together. And we just want to change the name that this is going to be for our landing page. And for now, I'm going to remove all the unnecessary items. We're going to focus on this populate. So in our Strapi application, let's navigate to our content type builder. Let's select landing page. And here we could see that we want to that we have our blocks and we want to populate our hero section. So we need to specify that in Strapi. So in our query builder, we're going to say we want to populate our blocks because that's what we called it. And we're going to pass another object. And here we're going to use the on key to specify what items we want to populate. Well, we want to populate our hero section, which is found in our blocks folder and the components called hero section. So we're able to reference it using it a dot notation. And on is going to be another object, which is going to include the key of our component, which is located in our blocks folder and it's called hero section. Now, if we take a look at our hero section component, we want to populate our links and our image. Our subheading, heading, and text will be auto-populated because these are top-level fields and not relations. But the link is a relation to our component and the image is relation to our media files. So we need to tell Strapi that we want to populate those. And we're gonna say we wanna populate our links and we're going to say populate passing star, which is gonna populate all the items first level depth. And then next we want to populate our image and we're going to say we just want to return the URL, the alternative text and name. So now that we have our query here, we're able to copy it to our clipboard. So now I'm going to make a new HTTP request and I'm going to paste in our query that we created to populate our data. Click send and notice here we're getting all the appropriate responses. My Postman instance is having issues of showing them in a pretty way. I'll figure this out later, but we could take a look at the whole object just by querying that in our URL. So again, we are making a request to localhost, passing a query, and here you could see that we're returning all of our data for our landing page. So we have our homepage title, our description, and here we're getting our blocks, which has our hero section component that we did. We could see that we have our subheading, heading, our text, our links and our image, and we're getting all the necessary data. And this is not something we're gonna cover in this course because we're not building a front end, we're focusing strictly on the back end. You could check out my Next.js course where we're gonna cover how to consume the data, but I will show you a really simple example just now. So here's an example of my Next.js application. Here I'm calling my data and I'm querying my items similar to what we just learned about. And when I get that data from Strapi, I have a block renderer function that will iterate through all the blocks that have been received from Strapi and I'm rendering them to screen. But if you're ever feeling lost, you could check out Strapi5 documentation, look on the REST API, and you could take a look at populate and select, filtering, sort and pagination, and it's gonna show you all the examples and explain things in a little bit more detail of how this works. But I'll continue to talk about this in the course that we're making. So to finally finish as a quick review, we figured out how to represent our website hero section in Strapi. We went ahead and created a hero section component to represent our data. Once that was done, we 
added this data to our landing page single type using our dynamic zone, which allows us to create a selectable field where you are able to choose and pick any different blocks that you create. We currently have one. We then went ahead and added our data to our landing page, including our first component where we had our subheading, heading, text, our links, and our image. And we learned about how to expose it in our project by giving permission for find. And we were able to get the data by making a get request to this endpoint. We also learned about using the query builder to learn more about how to query the data that we want to receive. And again, this takes a little bit more practice, but the more you do it, the more the better you will understand it. Once we were able to get our query string, we were able to make a get request to our landing page and get back our new block that we created, which was the hero section with all the appropriate data. Nice, we're making progress. In the next video, we're going to take a look how to create this feature section in our Strapi application. But with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.